Over the course of my final semester here at CSU, I had the amazing opportunity to visit a few local Northern Colorado business. And to start things off, I asked them what a local business means to them. Local business is pretty much anything where I think the owner uh, lives and uh, works. So it can encompass a whole variety of industries and sizes of businesses. So for us, we define a local business as uh, community oriented, uh, again, for us and our concept, all-inclusive, uh, very much so support of the other small businesses uh, around us. And Local businesses are, you know, uh, very community-oriented. Uh, we all pull together in tough times and, uh, you know, just support each other a lot. It, it's really great being in a small town. I define a local business as a someone that uh, it's a small business uh, owner. Try to succeed from coming from, you know, whatever your background or your industry or whatever, and you try to make the next step that your average person doesn't. Americans can spend their money on a variety of things every single day. Take this $100 bill, for example. We could spend it on housing, healthcare, personal needs, or transportation. And just like that, $100 can come and go without any hesitation due to our personal needs. But have you ever thought about where you're spending your hard-earned cash at and how that might impact the local economy and society you live in? I'm Jennifer Ferguson and my company is Bricks Retail Inc. Uh, my gift shop is called Bricks, and I chose the name Bricks because uh, the, it represented independent companies coming together to build something stronger. When we were imagining what could fill a need for local businesses here as a resource, I felt that a lot of product-based companies don't get the attention. It's a little bit harder and it takes more time. So we decided to focus that accelerator program, which is typically a, a couple month program with some benefits and resources uh, on product companies. And in order to do that, I said, well, how about if we offer a benefit of a retail shop that these product-based companies can put their products in? My name is Isaac Olson and my partner's name is Shane Stinn. We own Miko Coffee Collective here in Longmont, Colorado. We have a second location that's opening up in May uh, 2023 in Lafayette. And uh, we are here for a small business coffee collective in downtown Longmont. After COVID hit, we decided to start looking for a concept where we would be able to execute a cute and local coffee shop. And so we ended up landing on this coffee shop location back in 20, uh, the end of 2020, and we signed the lease uh, 2021. And so it really kind of just evolved from there with us being able to do all local goods, um, local coffee, local pastries made by us in-house. And then we also have our collective retail space, which kind of evolved over time into this artist collective um, local retail concept. And so really we just, have uh, moved forward to be able to support everything community oriented and everything local. Uh, I'm Stacy Sidlak. And I'm Tara Shaheen. And we're the owners of the Niwat Tavern. Our food is so good. You really can't go wrong on our menu. And um, it's not just bar food, it's really good food. We have chicken piccata, we have a T-bone steak, we, you know, we have huevos rancheros, we have a very diverse menu. All of our sauces are made to order. Um, we don't everything eat, scratch. Everything Most is things scratch. are scratch, yeah. Mac and cheese, they melt the cheese, they put the cream, you know, the, everything is to order. It's, I think what also sets us apart is that we support other businesses as well. Like she runs the Boulder Foodies Group, we advertise for other businesses and we 
believe that it's a group effort in this industry. My name is Marco, uh, last name Morado Perez. Uh, my business name is uh, El Mustache Barbershop, and we do cater uh, grooming services to uh, mostly men, and we do some women too. <laughs> the name El Mustache came up because I, I wanted to make it funny, you know? I wanted to make something that it was attractive and appealing to masses, not just, you know, your genetic names. For some reason in this industry, everybody wants to make it like a great or sports or, you know, I'm not gonna go into details on it, but when we started this, uh, I uh, I went and got El uh, Mustachio because every time that somebody asked me how to say mustache in Spanish, I would tell them, right? And mustache is, in Spanish is bigote. So people would be like, oh, I thought it was mustachio. So I thought it was funny and I was like, I'm just gonna add it to it because it's just like a practical joke, right? Well, go to find out that there is actually a word and in Italian just means an elongated mustache in Italian. I didn't know this at the time, but now I do. So that, that, that's that, that story to that one. Wow, many of these local businesses provide a lot of stuff that are unique and impactful towards the community they are reaching out to. Supporting these local businesses is essential for maintaining a strong and vibrant community. By supporting local businesses, people can help stimulate the local economy, create jobs, preserve the character of community, reduce environmental impacts, and build community connection. However, something recently has impacted the thriving success of all of these local businesses around Northern Colorado and the world. China has identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a profound impact on all of the local businesses that I visited. From a decrease in revenue to changes in consumer behavior, the COVID-19 pandemic reshaped the behavior and operations of all local businesses. And in March, we shut down for COVID and had to let go of 20 staff members. And we kept on six. And that was just kitchen. And then she and I ran the front for 18 months. I think the pandemic really emphasized how broken our supply chain uh, is and has become, or could could become, uh, faced with those types of challenges. Coming out of COVID, there was a lot of people that sold units that uh, forfeited and defaulted, and there was a lot of just disastrous things happening. And so this location had been open and available for about a year and a half prior to us taking it. Uh, but there was also not much else available to take at the time. Fear of the unknown. Because nobody wants to take a risk and fail, right? So I think that's the biggest challenge for anyone. But if you don't take that risk, you will never know. And if you never know, you're always going to be wonder what, ha what should happen, what it could be. I should have done it. Because at least if you fail, at least you know you fail, right? Like, that's certain, you did. But if you didn't do anything about it, like you didn't even took the first step, there's uncertainty. And uncertainty, in my experience, it just kills me. So I think um, that one, that's the biggest challenge of any small business. Despite the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, many local businesses in Colorado are finding ways to adapt and thrive. And there are programs and initiatives in place to support their success. In choosing local versus supporting local, people have, can feel better that they're getting a maybe better quality product. They are um, reducing a lot of the, all the, the pieces of getting that product to their door and that are definitely impacting our world. My first business, I was solo and it was tough. I would never, I never wanted another business after my first business. She talked me into it, and um, thank God I have Thank partner. God, yes. Yeah. She, whatever I can do, she does. Whatever she can do, I do. Community means a whole heck of a lot to us. I mean, every small business without the community is essentially nothing, and I do have to firmly state that, because, I mean, your community are the individuals that come and patronize your business, and it's one of those things where it's, uh, without your community, I don't feel like you would have a business. But we've taken it to a different level where we really want to be that community resource center essentially for other small businesses like I've mentioned for the retailers but not 
only for the retailers, also people that are interested in finding out more information about starting their own small business or uh, how do I fill out a tax form or, you know, we just wanted to be this all-inclusive wealth of knowledge kind of concept where our doors are open for anybody to come through and find out any information that we may know and in turn hopefully support others uh, down the road in doing so as well. If they give it a try, do not look at the price, like, that's what I'm saying, right? And not like I'm expensive or anything like that, but compared to some of those franchises, it's a, it, it can be a little more pricey, you know? Why? Because I'm taking my time and I'm making sure you look the best. You look the best that you can be in my parameters or perspective of what I know. They don't. They don't care. Now that you have gotten a sense and perspective that some of these local business owners have shared to you about, by supporting local businesses, people can help boost the local economy, access unique products and services, receive personalized care, reduce environmental impacts, and build community. And keeping your money local is just one of the many great aspects of supporting a local business. Don't take my word for it. Just listen to all of these amazing owners that I've talked to. You should definitely support locally owned businesses because it is their it, love. It's, it's, it's their us. heart and it's soul, our, yes. and that's what they want. We, uh, it's our do. lives. Yeah. And there's no days off. It's it's different because people don't care. It's true. It does take uh, customers who come, and that happens here all the time. People walk in my door. I'm in year three and they will say, wow, I had no idea you were here. I can't wait to tell my friend. Uh, I didn't know, I've been looking for this. Support your small, small businesses, even if it's a little more expensive, support them. Because you don't know the struggles, you don't know what they have to go through, you don't know like the stress and the, and the tears and the things that can happen, man. Because if I can tell you how many times I wanted to give up in, in the process, it, it's just, and I did it, and I'm glad I did it, because now where I'm at, you know, like, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm in, I'm in a good place, right? I mean, we very much so promote uh, a safe, all-inclusive space for any sex, religion, orientation. It does not matter to us. We really just try to keep uh, an even keel on whatever our politics and religious beliefs are and just keep a space where everyone feels comfortable. And so I really think that we're able to separate ourselves from uh, some other businesses where you can walk through the doors and you essentially feel at home. And we try to be inviting and just, you know, you need a hug, we'll give you a hug. You need a cup of coffee, we'll give you a cup of coffee kind of deal. Because the last few years have just been upside down with just, you know, a lot of individuals, human nature coming out and just disaster brings out the worst in people. And it's just one of those things where we really just want to rally together and be able to have that safe and loving environment.